Jim Chalmers said his number one priority in the budget Tuesday is responsible, targeted aid for struggling Australians. Has also managed to squeeze a little help from fighters like Andrew Forrest, one of the top earners from the $2 billion subsidy announcement for green hydrogen. The subsidy was less than a quarter of Fortescue Metals Group's after-tax profit last year, but Forrest graciously acknowledged that would be enough to at least make it work. According to Forrest, green hydrogen, an immature technology, will one day be worth trillions and create jobs and economic growth for decades. Energy Secretary Chris Bowen bought the site. Announced in budget, the hydrogen startup program is part of Albanese Green New Deal, a package of subsidies and incentives aimed at developing green technologies in Australia. Global competition for capital was fierce even before US President Joe Biden passed the US $369 billion Inflation Reduction Act and sparked a global green subsidies arms race. In March, US Ambassador Caroline Kennedy challenged Australia to match and beat Biden's subsidy-based Green New Deal, and Labor overcame that challenge. The reality is that if we want to keep up with rest of world and zero emissions race by 2050, Australia, like rest of developed world, has no choice but to compete on its own subsidies. Resources billionaire Andrew Forrest will be one of the primary beneficiaries of Labor's decision to allocate a $2 billion subsidy for green hydrogen. NCA Newswire John Gass even so, taxpayers have a right to ask why the government is distributing billions of dollars in green aid to very profitable companies. They may also question why Energy Secretary Chris Bowen chose to support such a niche sector of the green economy when advanced technologies to choose from. Investing in green hydrogen is speculative to say the least. Producing hydrogen of any color at a competitive price would be a feat enough, given the many technical and industrial challenges. Producing green hydrogen requires a daunting investment in industrial-scale wind and solar power plants over large areas of Australian land, along with transmission lines and batteries. It's a little premature to talk about Australia being a green hydrogen superpower. It cannot be said that the government is particularly good at picking winners. Quite the opposite because businesses seeking government support are often those struggling to raise private capital. Anyone remember biochar? It is coal produced from the slow, anaerobic combustion of plants that can theoretically capture atmospheric carbon dioxide that can be buried in the ground. Kevin Rudd's government has put a lot of money into it as part of the 4.5 billion clean energy initiative. Then there was his obsession with solar power generation which Rudd supports under the $1.5 billion solar flagships program. It remains a commercial failure. The Rudd government's $2 billion carbon capture and storage flagships program was